And moving right along, I think this will probably be the last topic we're going to have time for today, is a discussion on power grid failure and blackouts. And this is something I've been looking at, uh, looking at for a little while now. And i got to tell you, when I try to talk to people about my concerns on domestic preparedness issues, um, the first thing on my list is not nuclear terrorism. The first thing on my list is not improvised explosive devices or active shooters, all of which are concerns in our daily lives in this particular culture. What I am most concerned about on a national level is the failure of our power grids in a prolonged blackout. Now, I am often uh, chided, made fun of by some of my coworkers for my standings on domestic preparedness, and sometimes I've been called too apocalyptic to be taken seriously. Well, in fact, my line of questioning when it comes to the established because we've always done it that way policy uh, has cost me personally and professionally on more than one occasion. And you know, that's okay because I am an independent thinker. I am an independent podcaster and blogger, and my thoughts on domestic preparedness, unfortunately, usually, uh, well, more than half the time, uh, come true in the long run. So, you know, I think I've got some credibility and validity to talk about the prolonged blackout or power grid failure situation is one of the major threats we face in this country. Now, uh, there's another area, as I said, that it's not out, it's not too far outside of the traditional response arena. That is the potential of a prolonged blackout. Now, every time I want to talk to people about this, nobody really wants to engage me in conversation. Now, even the thought of bringing this up in some conversations gets me some strange looks. People look at me like I've got antlers on. What do you mean a power grid could fail and we wouldn't have electricity for a couple of days? Well, how about a couple months? What about a year or more? Now, I believe the loss of electricity related to power grid failure, like I said, is one of the most likely and most devastating threats we could face. And nobody wants to talk about it or plan for it. But recently, there's been some things in the mainstream media that have caused me to take a deeper look at what this potential situation could bring. It's, you know, it's really a relevant thing for us to be concerned about. Um, we need to talk about these things that are a little bit on the fringes that nobody wants to really discuss because these are the things that aren't typically planned for in a, in a routine threat assessment or hazard vulnerability. And we have become so reliant on electricity for generations, not just now, but for generations reliant on electricity that, that we might have a little bit of trouble adjusting without it. And I don't think the average... Uh, responder, the average person in a civilian life recognizes uh, the the broad scope uh, of a power failure will be. It won't be just be the lights going out, folks. Uh, power failures in, in the long term will result in things like loss of water. So anyways, let's take a look at our power grid and understand, first of all, that the power grid is a series of power plants that are just simply connected by wires, and they deliver or distribute the electricity from one place to another. Now, if a power plant has to be taken off the grid, let's say for repair or maintenance or whatever the case is, the other plants on that grid will spin up or work a little harder to make up the capacity to meet demand. And that's really a good thing. That's kind of a, a backup system, if you will. Now, the, the issue is that when the, the power grid itself is functioning at capacity and one power plant fails or is unexpectedly taken offline, the other plants may not be able to meet demand. And we've heard this talked about in the mainstream media a little bit this summer with the uh, the high temperatures this year, this past summer, and so many people using air conditioning and, and such like that. But it could easily happen in the wintertime as well with people increasing uh, uh, demands for heat uh, and electricity. So the point is that when the system is running at capacity or as close to full capacity as it can be and then something happens and it causes a failure, um, those redundancies may become overwhelmed and then begin to kick themselves offline. Let's say one power plant uh, just has an issue, kicks itself offline while, while operating at peak capacity and the other plants uh, can't keep up. And so we start having them kick off one by one in order to, to keep uh, keep themselves from damage. And thus, a cascade of failures travels through the power grid and results in power outages. Now, keep in mind that in our current power grid system, there is no capacity for storage of electricity. So when the plant shuts down, we go dark. 
And this has been the case in nearly every major blackout situation from the 1960s right up to 2003. So what can cause these failures? Well, it can be simple maintenance problems, storms, lightning, other natural events, fires that can cause these things, natural disasters. Um, I've, I've had a couple emails actually uh, sent in recently asking me, well, what about this EMP thing or electromagnetic pulse? Uh, something like a, a nuclear blast can cause an EMP. There can be a, a man-made EMP, and in fact, that's been a, uh, a suspicious uh, or suspicion of terrorist activity, a, a detonation of an electromagnetic pulse. Uh, these things can slam shut a power grid or any electronic uh, system for quite some time and actually cause some damage. And on a natural uh, side of things, a solar storm has gotten some uh, some attention in mainstream media and the electromagnetic disturbances that could actually devastate uh, our electrical power grid for years, uh, according to some scientists. Now, whatever the cause may be, the loss of elect electricity it is you know, for many people, an unnerving thought. Consider yourself in your local grocery store or local shopping center going about your business on an average Saturday evening. Uh, it's 8 o'clock at night, it's just getting dark, and all of a sudden, the store that you're in, the mall that you're in, goes completely dark. And you're in there with a couple thousand of your closest friends. What do you do? What's the natural reaction? People sometimes will stand around for a little while expecting the lights to go on. Some people will continue to do what they've always been doing, continue to shop and look around and seemingly oblivious to the situation. Some people will immediately exit the building. So you go outside, you find that all the lights in the parking lot are dark and all the surrounding areas are dark. All right, you make your way to your car, you get in your car on that Saturday evening. Now it's getting a little darker outside. You start your car and you realize you've got uh, less than a quarter tank of fuel in your car. So you figure on your way home, because the power went out in a wide area in your town, you better stop and get some fuel. And you stop at the local gas station and realize they're out of power and can't pump gas. Not only that, but you figure, well, something must be happening, so you're going to swing by the ATM on your way home and take out a couple hundred bucks in cash, because you don't keep any cash on you like we say you should do. And you go to your local ATM, and the local ATM's not working either. So now you find yourself literally in the dark, no fuel in your vehicle, and no cash on hand. Hmm, we've got a problem here. Then you head home and recognize that you haven't kept a couple days worth of uh, food or uh, drinking water in the house, but that's okay because we'll just turn the faucet on and um, water's going to come out. But in a prolonged power outage situation, maybe the water treatment and pumping stations aren't able to function. And maybe if it's really cold outside, you're going to have some heat and heat or environmental control issues in your home. So the point is, whatever the cause, whether it's intentional, accidental, or natural, the sudden loss of electricity can be unnerving, especially when we don't know when it's going to come back on. There will be an impact on the infrastructure and civil response. That includes the traditional responders like us, the fire, EMS, law enforcement. The longer the outage continues, the greater the impact will be on everyone. Consider that in your area, or maybe you live in a high-rise apartment building, or you have hotels in your response district, the, the longer that outage continues, the worse the impact is going to be, as I said. Now consider that elevators are going to stop working. How are you going to get rescuers up to the 23rd or 50th or 100th floor of a building? How are you going to get people down from there? They certainly can't stay there very long. Again, some of these lessons we've learned out of Hurricane Katrina, they just haven't really applied in the everyday situation. The ability to purify and pump water will slow to a drip. Natural gas distribution may cease. Even those places with backup power supplies may eventually run short. The impact on healthcare systems and facilities will be catastrophic in many cases as evacuation of healthcare facilities may become impossible. Consider moving uh, someone on a ventilator from the intensive care unit down five flights of stairs because the elevators aren't working and the backup generator has failed. That's a very in impossible situation to deal with, and sheltering in place may just be a slightly better opportunity or option for you, but that may not work either. In either case, the power to ventilators and other medical machinery will fail. Communications will eventually fail, and transportation systems probably fail uh, long before that. So we've got a number of points we have to talk about. Um, and we're going to save those for, for future editions of Mitigation Journal. But the point is, I think this is a time we really, uh, as seasons start to change here, 
as we start to move into September, which is National Preparedness Month, uh, look at the hazards we could likely face. The loss of power, power grid failure, and prolonged power outages, I really think are something we need to put on our list to be independent of, uh, of that. Now, I'm not suggesting we all go out and put a wind turbine or solar panels on top of our house or something of that nature, uh, but certainly things we have to include in our everyday planning. I don't think we can ignore the, the power grid failures. I don't think we can ignore the possibility of prolonged power outages uh, and how that will impact our system, whether again, natural, man-made, accidental mechanical failures, or intentional. I think the, the risks are there. So the impact on society caused by a prolonged power grid failure is almost too difficult to manage, but that's our challenge. We have to start thinking that way and, and try and figure out what we do personally and pro professionally. If we had to go without power for a month, or six months, or a year. If we don't, if we don't think about this or think it through soon, I think it could be a long winter.